Good afternoon, everyone. Campbell McCreary here again, Anvest Capital, New York City. Welcome to the Anvest Capital Inc. Live webinar with Arcana Silver Corporation. Uh, Arcana trades on the venture as AUN and as AUNFF on the OTCQX. Hope you'll enjoy today's program. It will be available in replay mode. Do feel free to chat in your questions in the question pane of GoToWebinar or email them in and we'll incorporate them into our line of questioning. Um, Amvest is, is a New York-based specialist investment management and corporate finance firm focused solely on the natural resource, uh, resource sector. Uh, please, uh, before we get started, this call is for informational purposes only. Uh, very pleased to have with us today, uh, Kevin Drover, who is the president, CEO, and director of Orcana, more than 40 years of both domestic and international uh, experience in operations, project development, management, and process re-engineering. Um, he was uh, COO of Glencairn, responsible before this, responsible for two gold mining operations in Latin America. And uh, he's also the vice president of operations for Kinross uh, prior to that. So Kevin, if you want to um, share your screen and your webcam, uh, we're gonna take our dive, there we go. There we are. All right, it's all yours. Great, thanks, Campbell. Uh, good to be here, everybody, and uh, thanks for uh, for participating. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, Orcana Corporation, and uh, hopefully, you'll like the story. Uh, we're obviously a silver company. We have uh, two operations. Oh, just just to pass by this, we may be making some forward-looking statements, so just a cautionary, the usual cautionary statements. Um, we've got uh, two projects, both located in continental United States. The uh, flagship of the company is the Revenue Virginia's Mine, uh, right here, located in southwest Colorado, uh, not far from the town of Ure. It's about a seven hour drive if you wanted to drive it from Denver or a half hour plane ride, that probably most people would take. Uh, and this is our the flagship, and this is the mine that we're putting into production. Uh, the second project that we've got in the pipeline is the Shafter Mine located in Texas. It's about a three hour drive southeast of El Paso, Texas, or a half hour drive south of Marfa, Texas. Uh, it is uh, fully permitted. It was in uh, production uh, as recently as 2013, been on care and maintenance since that time. There's a 1500 ton a day mill on the site. Uh, however, uh, it is at a PEA status, a preliminary economic assessment level. Uh, so we need to do some more technical work on that before we would look at putting it into production, which we intend uh, to do. And in fact, we're, we're, it's ongoing right now. We have uh, a geologist reviewing the, uh, uh, the geology, the, uh, the drilling that's been done and the uh, resource assessment that's, uh, that's already in place. We think we can improve on that. However, uh, we think we need to do a little bit more drilling, um, mainly to see if we can expand the resource, but uh, maybe even more importantly, to, uh, to get some metallurgical uh, sample. We're looking at possibly doing that in the, in the next couple of months kind of thing, with an eye to uh, initiating a uh, feasibility study later this fall. We think Marfa, uh, the, the uh, Shafter mine, uh, could possibly do to, between two and two and a half million ounces a year. And it would be a nice add on to the revenue mine uh, as we get that back into production. So just to go through uh, you know, where, where we stand right now, our flagship mine is, uh, is the Revenue Virginia's mine. It is uh, primary silver with uh, has some gold and base metal credits. It's located obviously in Colorado in the US. It is fully permitted for production. Uh, we're doing uh, pre-production development underground right now. We have a uh, roughly a 550 ton a day mill uh, capability. Uh, we're fully funded for production and we have a substantial contingency uh, in, in the event, you know, things do happen as we start up. Uh, but uh, we think our startup is gonna be relatively smooth and we're working toward that now. We have our full management team on the ground uh, we're all located here in Ure, uh, in, uh, in the uh, county of, uh, and the town of Ure in Colorado. I moved down uh, from Vancouver in uh, early December to be close to the operation and to oversee uh, the restart of this mine. 
we're low cost of production. Uh, our feasibility study says we're about $8 an ounce on, an, on a pure silver basis, $10.71 on a silver equivalent basis. We've seen some price pressures over the last uh, 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 six months, uh, primarily in steel, uh, things like ground support, uh, uh, things like that, uh, rail and, and uh, those kinds of things, and labor. So we, we think our costs are going to be up a little bit, and we're thinking more like $9 an ounce rather than the $8 an ounce that's in the feasibility, simply based on, on what we're seeing on the ground. Well, you know, uh, obviously it's still a very low uh, all-in sustaining cost of production. Currently, uh, we are doing pre-production underground development. We have about 130 people on site. 20 of those are, uh, are contractors that are doing some of the workforce, but about 110 of these folks are actually doing the underground development, sur surface works, and, and things like that. So we're well on our way to achieve our production in the third quarter of, uh, of this year. It's only a couple of months away to the third quarter. Uh, also, as part of this presentation, I'd like to talk a little bit about our, our upside potential here from our current uh, reserves and resources. Right now, we have a, uh, about a seven-year mine life in front of us. We think that's going to go on for decades. We have some opportunities in regional consolidation. Uh, we're, we're not in a terribly big hurry to do that. Uh, although there are those opportunities, we are focused on getting ourselves into production first, and then we can take a look at those things. And of course. The second in line here is our uh, Shafter uh, project in Texas that we would see bringing online somewhere in probably 18 to 24 months from now. A little bit on the company, uh, issued an outstanding shares, 275 million, 117 million warrants, give or take. Uh, those are split uh, sort of uh, 40 million of those warrants are at a strike price of 37 and a half cents. Uh, we've got another 40 million in and around uh, 75 cent strike price. Uh, the 37 and a half cent warrants have about a year to run, a little over a year to run. Uh, the 75 cent warrants have uh, about two years to run. And there is another 35 million, give or take, of uh, $1.25 year warrants that have close to three years to run. Uh, our cash balance right now is uh, at the time of, of doing this. Uh, uh, update to the presentation. We were right at around 40 million. Uh, we're just a tad below that right now. Uh, we do have some debt on the balance sheet. We have a $28 million debt uh, that uh, we've taken uh, with a company out of uh, uh, Zug, Switzerland, the Courier. Um, that is a five year facility. Uh, there are no kickers uh, with the debt. Uh, we have a 12 month grace period. Uh, this facility is prepayable. Uh, after that 12-month uh, grace period without any penalty. Uh, the, uh, the debt runs at 14.5% until we reach a production of approximately 400 tons a month. Uh, then the, the uh, coupon rate drops down to 10.5 plus LIBOR uh, for the remainder of the, uh, of the life of the, of the debt facility. Um, it, but I, as I said, it is prepayable uh, anytime after the first 12 months. Uh, just a little bit on, uh, you know, where we fit in with our, what we perceive to be at least our, uh, uh, our peers in the industry. And probably here in this red outline box here, uh, the, the, the one most close and most comparable to us, we believe, is Alexco. Alexco is, uh, has a mine in the Yukon. They're very similar to us. They're high grade. Uh, they just started up uh, recently. But as you can see from this, uh, you know, they're double our market cap. Uh, we're one of the highest grade mines in the world. We're one of the lowest cost mines. Uh, and uh, we think that uh, we can certainly uh, see a re-rating on us once we get ourselves into production here. So uh, we believe that we're certainly undervalued at this stage of our, uh, of our life. And you know, given the fact that we're looking at two to three months of being into production here, uh, we should see that uh, re-rate uh, you know, in the near future. A uh, little bit on, on the metrics of the feasibility study itself. We've got a proven and probable reserve of 21 million ounces. And as I said, we're one of the highest grade mines in the world at 37 ounces per ton. Our first five years of full production, we're right around 3.1 million ounces. However, in the first couple of years, we're going to be a bit higher than that. Uh, 
The feasibility study was run at $18.50 uh, silver, $1,300 gold, a buck uh, lead, and a dollar twenty zinc. The only uh, the only uh, component here that's lower than this price right now is lead, sitting today at around 93 cents. So, you know, given the fact that uh, silver price right now is uh, hanging in around 26, 25, 26 dollars an ounce, uh, you know, we can look to do very, very well uh, in the first, uh, you know, during the life of this mine. Uh, silver represents 71% of our revenue based on 1850. That would be a little bit higher now given our, uh, you know, the higher silver prices and whatnot. Uh, picture of the mill. Uh, the mill is underground. It's already built. Uh, we are uh, doing some work in the mill that uh, primarily enhancing the capability of the mill itself, taking out some of the troubled spots where it operated before. Uh, we're also doubling the size of the flotation circuit, doing those things. So uh, we anticipate having the mill ready in early July. Uh, so, uh, you know, we'll be commissioning as we go here. So this, uh, this, this mill is run before. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're starting up at a relatively small tonnage. Our actual uh, uh, tons per day that we're starting up at is 270 tons per day. And that's the basis on which the feasibility was run. Uh, the mill, however, has a capability of in excess of 500 tons a day. So we have opportunity to grow the production here over the next year or, or, or you know, year and a half kind of thing up to something close to that 500 tons a day. Now that's very much dependent on you know how, how much uh, we can get ahead on our development and so on. Uh, but uh, you know, 270 tons a day, we intend to start up at that uh, uh, mining and milling rate. We'll get our our metallurgy settled down, our productivities, and then we'll uh, tackle our costs and, and and get the costs down. We certainly anticipate anybody, I think, starting up a new mine. You tend to be a little bit higher in cost on the upfront, but as you work on those, you get down to uh, you know your predicted costs. So uh, we anticipate um, you know settling in at that two uh, two seventy tons a day, and then gradually we'll bring on two seventy tons a day. Requires basically two stopes in operation. We will have four stopes uh, pretty much ready by the time we start up. So we can once we settle down at our two seventy, we'll be able to bring a third stope on. And that will take us up to about 400 tons a day. And we anticipate that we would get to that four and a half to five million ounces. And uh, then beyond that, we would bring a, a fourth stove on and we would hope to get to that six million, six and a half million ounces. In uh, 18, 24 months, we bring Shafter online uh, at about two to two and a half million. And we should be in that eight to nine million ounce range within, you know, by 2025 kind of thing. Uh, this is just a brief picture. It's a small uh, footprint here. Um, we're up in the mountains. We're at 10,600 feet above sea level uh, in the San Juan Mountains of Colorado. Colorado is a decent place to do, excuse me, is a decent place to do business. Um, from an environmental perspective, we, that we have uh, had all the NGOs on site. Uh, we've we've uh, partnered up with uh, NGOs like uh, Trout Unlimited, with the EPA, with uh, with the U.S. Forest Service, we've been cleaning up some of the old legacy mines around here, and we intend to continue doing that uh, as as we go. So we've uh, we've had most of the politicians, we've had the county commissioners, the mayors, um, the senators have all toured this mine underground. So uh, and our community is is very much an oriented. Uh, uh, mining oriented community. Uh, there were over thousands of mines in this part of the of the country over the last 150 years and there's still a lot of mining people in this particular area. So right now we enjoy uh, a, a very good relationship between you know the community and all the various stakeholders as well. Just a, a quick note on on the the county that we're in, Ure County. Um, we're second uh, largest employee here, uh, only second to the school uh, district, but we are the largest taxpayer in this uh, in this part of uh, or in the county itself. So uh, you know we, we mean uh, quite a lot, I think, to the uh, to the local uh, uh, budget and the, uh, uh, the the county in general. Um, 
here, th this is a really important slide to get an idea of where our future is going to come from. We have um, approximately nine major veins on the property. There's more than that, but these are major veins. We own all of these. These are on patented claims. And in, excuse me, in Colorado, uh, if you own the apex, then it doesn't matter where the vein goes after that. You own it. You can go on any claim as long as you own the top of the of the uh, uh, of the vein itself. Uh, the vein that is uh, uh, of primary interest to us right at the moment is the Virginia's vein, and that's what we focused on. Uh, Virtually all of our resources and reserves are on the the uh, Virginia Spain. There is a little bit on one of the, the couple of the other veins, but it's not truly significant. The Virginia Spain is the most is the highest grade, is the most steeply dipping. It's the easiest to mine. It's the cleanest of them. Although all of those other eight veins uh, have been in production at one type uh, uh, one time or another in the uh, over the past 150 years. So it's a very prolific area. But we're focused primarily uh, in this region. If you see these two dotted lines right here and right here, this is pretty much where all of our current resources and reserves are contained between this. This is about 4,000 feet between these two lines. We own 16,000 feet of the Virginia Spain, and our resources and reserves right now are on 4,000 feet of that. So we have significant potential to the north, and we have significant potential to the south, not to mention uh, you know, all the other veins that we do have. This black line right here is uh, our tunnel uh, that accesses the, uh, the Virginia's vein. It also accesses uh, the majority of all the other veins as well, the Atlas Cumberland, the Wheel of Fortune, uh, the Yellow Rose uh, are all accessible from here. So all of this is complete. This is 8,000 feet roughly of uh, underground development done. And the long section right here, this is actually our entrance coming in right, right along right here. So that's all complete. Um, our resources and reserves are all located right here. The purple and the pink is where our, that's measured and indicated. And then on top of that goes the mine plan for the actual reserve. So this is what is in the mine plan. This green area that you see right here is inferred, so that is not included in the mine plan. We anticipate that as we get up here to mine this, that we will actually mine the, uh, the, the green area as well. The reason it's not in the, uh, in the mine plan is simply because we couldn't get a drill hole in it. So, uh, but it just stands to reason if you've got high grade material down here, you've got high grade material up here, there's no reason at all why this is not going to be uh, mineable ore as well. In addition to that, of course, we have all of this, we've got 8,000 feet from this line right here all the way to the north, and we've got several thousand feet here to the south. So the reality of it is that we think we're gonna be mining on this vein for a couple of decades at least without even touching some of the other veins. We have multiple exploration targets here uh, really and truly, our focus has been on uh, getting ourselves into production. Uh, we will take some time once we get ourselves into production, we get cash flowing. Uh, we'll see what the use of proceeds beyond that, what, what uh, you know, our priorities will be. Uh, but, you know, we'll certainly be doing some exploration on some of these veins. Uh, but we have to sit back and uh, take a look and ponder on what, what's going to be our highest priorities uh, at the end of the day. Uh, this gray area that you see down right here, this, this mine was in operation from 1876, I believe, all the way up to 1912. And they mined 25 million ounces out of here. And the average grade that came out was in excess of 60 ounces per ton. So that's six zero. Uh, very, very high grade mine. They made money every year for those 46 years. They shut down in 1912, not because they ran out of ore, uh, but simply because uh, there was an avalanche, their mill was on surface at that point in time. Avalanche took out the mill, the mill caught fire, burned down. Uh, and the family that owned this mine at that point in time, the silver price had been depressed early in the uh, early part of the last century. They decided to focus on their gold mines, which they had in Colorado, and just never bothered restarting that. So uh, very, very high grade. Um, off to the south here, 
we have a tremendous amount of uh, information from the old days. They kept meticulous records. So we have sampling from all of these faces that they were mining out here. We have a development drift on, they call it 1400 that they sampled. So we have all of that information. And there were some very, very good uh, high grade uh, samples from there. So we know pretty much from the information that we've got that uh, you know, this continues off to the south here. We did put a mine plan together on this to do some exploration uh, a year or so back. And it looks like uh, we could get, uh, based on you know, our average vein width that we have right now and based on using the average grade that we have in our feasibility study, we think with a 50% conversion rate, we would have about 25 million ounces. And we think the cost of getting that uh, from an exploration perspective of confirming that would be about a dollar an ounce. So we're looking at around $20 million uh, exploration cost simply because you can't drill it. You have to go and develop underground to, uh, to be able to uh, determine your grade and your uh, vein width and so on. Uh, but also off to the north here, uh, this vein comes right to surface. We can see it, we've sampled it, uh, it's there. So we are fully anticipating, you know, we're gonna be mining up right here in the 1800, 1500, 1200, 900 areas in right here starting off because this is the highest grade. Uh, and the grades right here are going to be plus 45 ounces per ton, uh, up as high in some cases as 60 ounces per ton. Uh, but we believe once we're up here, we will be able to continue developing on the vein all the way out here. Uh, we, we don't know that for sure yet, but it, uh, we're, we're, that's certainly what we're anticipating. So uh, just to give you a little blow up of this area right here, this next slide will do that. Uh, right now, um, I didn't get this updated in time, but as I said, the main haulage level, which is what we call the 2000, that's completed. Uh, this number one raise, which is going to house uh, basically an elevator, uh, it will move men, materials, power, water, air, and so on. Uh, right now, we're just up to the 1500 level and probably just going past it. Uh, so we're going up as far as the 1200 and then we'll be installing an elevator and we'll be able to move our man materials quite easily between the 1500, 2000 uh, and uh, 1200 and 1800. The uh, number two uh, is, a, um, is an ore pass ultimately. The number three will be a waste pass. Right now we're at the 1500 level. We're developing on the 1800 level and we'll be accessing the vein sometime in mid-May. We're also starting to drive up on the number three uh, and that will allow us then to get ourselves into production first and foremost on the 1800 level, then on the 1500 level. Uh, but we do anticipate, to be honest with you, you know, there's high grade up here, we wanna go get it. But also once we're on the vein, uh, you know, we'll keep going on the vein on these various levels as well. So we're well on our way uh, to be able to get ourselves into production. Uh, as I said earlier, we're anticipating uh, being in production uh, in, uh, in the third quarter. Uh, things are going very well uh, right now from our development. And, uh, you know, we anticipate uh, seeing some more coming out certainly in July. Uh, and, uh, you know, we'll be, uh, we'll be starting up uh, sometime in July, we anticipate at this stage of the game, and uh, we're looking at being cash flow positive in September. Uh, the mill works that we're, we're currently doing are uh, going along quite well. Uh, we're, uh, we're out of the winter months right now. Our fears of getting hit by COVID uh, are greatly diminished at this stage. Most everybody in the county that we're in uh, is uh, now eligible for vaccination. Most of our employees have been vaccinated. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, that worry that I had a few months back is pretty well gone. With the uh, weather improving down here, uh, you know, we're seeing improved uh, time in the slopes and so on. And our productivities are, uh, are actually improving considerably as well uh, as we, uh, as we uh, you know, continue with our development. Uh, just to give you a little bit of perspective on, you know, the history uh, of production in this part of the world, uh, the, uh, the San Juans have been a prolific mining area uh, over the last 150 years. There's been, in fact, more than 3,000 mines in this, 
in this area. Um, and uh, we're the only mine in this area right now with a permitted mill and a fully permitted uh, project to go to production. And of course, we're, we're sitting in right here. Uh, the Camp Bird mine is a, was a hundred year producer. It ran for over a hundred years, produced more than a million ounces. Sunnyside, it ran over a hundred years. Shenandoah Dive ran over a hundred years. Idorado, which was a Newmont mine, ran over a hundred years, 120 as a matter of fact. And this mine, you know, it ran 1876 up to 1912, ran 46 years. So very, very prolific. Ure is up here, town of Silverton right here, and the town of Telluride right here. Uh, so it's a good address, that's for certain. Um, here, uh, you know, we have some opportunities in this area to pick up some, uh, you know, properties that are nearby. We, in effect, own uh, the green, the, the brown, and the blue. Blue is, a, is kind of an overstake. Um, the Ruby Trust Mine, which is the yellow right here, uh, is a past producer, was a very high grade gold system uh, that ran uh, many, many years. Uh, it's for sale right now. Uh, from what we can see, we're doing some due diligence uh, on this and you know, it, it makes some sense, I think at, at some point, once we're in production to, uh, to see if we can get a deal done here. Uh, but we see something in the order of something north and better than a half ounce per ton of gold. There's a lot of uh, development already done. The, the, the vein is exposed in the face. And uh, the good part is it's uh, about a half an hour trucking distance to our mill. Uh, and it's also permanent. Uh, so, uh, you know, it would uh, certainly be complementary to our particular operation. Uh, these uh, claims right here, the purple, these are the Orvis claims. Um, these are for sale. Uh, you know, we've, we've been in negotiations with the Orvis group. Uh, we think there's a deal to be done there. Uh, and we'll get to that in, in due course here as we get ourselves into production. The other one that's of interest to us nearby is uh, this pink area right here, which is called the Camp Bird Mine. As I said before, uh, it was in operation for over 100 years. It was a gold producer. Uh, it's got a couple of things that are uh, of interest to us. It's got a tunnel, actually, that goes in, a 10,000-foot tunnel that goes in pretty much right underneath our mine, about 900 feet lower than us. So from a secondary access into our mine, uh, water management, things like that, it would be a benefit to us. It's also got a, a couple of things that are important. It has two permitted tailing spots, um, and it has a permitted uh, uh, mill site for a 1,500 ton a day mill. Um, our mill, as uh, I showed you earlier, is, uh, is underground. And uh, it's underground for the reason that took out the original mill because we are in avalanche country. Uh, but that puts limitations on us out to, uh, you know, uh, as to how, it, it, how much we could expand that particular uh, mill, uh, given that it's underground. You do not want to be blasting and uh, trying to excavate while you're operating a mill. So in the future, as we, um, we uh, consolidate the district and uh, we believe we're going to be able to grow the production. It may be to our advantage to own this uh, so that we do have that permitted mill site. We do have that. There's two uh, permitted tailings ponds there as well, although we do have sufficient capacity for all of our known reserves and resources uh, in our existing tailings ponds. Uh, but, uh, you know, this, this is another, another um, a consolidation uh, play and it would make some sense for us to have that uh, on a go forward basis as we believe you know that we're going to be here for a very long time uh, not a matter of years but decades uh, and uh, if you look at just the Virginia's vein we believe we can get 20 years out of that and that's not even looking at the uh, at the other projects and whatnot uh, and the other veins that we have in this area so we're looking to be uh, you know, within the next two to three years, we'll start up at that 270 tons a day. We've got a mill that's in excess of that uh, 400, 500 tons a day. Uh, we'll be able to take the tons up to, uh, uh, to the limit of the mill, we believe, uh, as we go forward. And uh, we are looking to be, you know, in that mid-tier uh, producer range, up in that eight to nine million ounces over those coming years. So with that, I will uh, I'll take a pause. Right on, let's dig in. Thank you everyone for your questions. They're piling in, I love it. And um, 
with that, um, someone messaged in. Um, he had the impression there were had been earlier promises of earlier start dates over over the last year or two. Um, if you just want to comment on uh, the delays, if any, and and postponements and uh, timeline, nothing is is uh, starts on time. But uh, anyway, yeah. he's noticing. <laughs> Well, uh, no, I think what we said, if you look at the feasibility study, we said seven months uh, to yeah. first door through the mill and nine months to uh, uh, positive cash flow. I think we're not far off that schedule. Uh, and as a matter of fact, things are, you know, I, I'm trying not to be too, too specific, uh, but, you know, things, things are going very well. I, I think we'll be, uh, we'll be pretty much right on our schedule that we originally said. Okay. Um... Could you just go in a little bit more detail share of, on share ownership and funds and insiders and management? Uh, yeah, so uh, there's about 28 funds, I believe, into us now, 28, 29 uh, funds. Um, and uh, with our last equity uh, offering that we had, there were a couple of uh, bigger ones that came in out of uh, Europe, uh, UK and Europe and whatnot. Um, our largest shareholder uh, is the Lascaux Resource Capital Fund. Mm -hmm. uh, two representatives from, uh, from that group sit on our board, and uh, they own approximately 30% of the company, and I believe as it uh, sits right now. So uh, from a management uh, perspective, if you take that into consideration, I guess uh, uh, board members and management were probably, you know, 35% uh, all up that we own of the company. All right. Um, you, could you talk a bit more about the warrants? And yeah, the warrants. Um, uh, and uh, have any been exercised at 37 cents? Yeah, we, we've had some of the 37, uh, not a huge amount. I don't have the exact number. I think it's somewhere around 8 million, probably out of that uh, 24 million that's been, uh, that was out, or was even more than that, I believe. I can't remember exactly. But uh, they've got uh, they've got about I believe another 16 months to run and the 37 and a half cent ones, the uh, 75 cent warrants. I think there's about 40 million of those as well. Uh, they have another two years to run, and then the last bunch that uh, came out was 35 million, I believe, at a dollar 25, and uh, they pretty much got uh, like 34 months to run. Uh, they were issued, I believe, in February. Can you take control of the lease claims and how much? Say again? Can you take control of the leased claims, L-E-S-E-D, uh, and how, by how much? The leased claims. Uh, L-E-A-S-E-D, leased. No. Oh, the leased claims, yeah. Uh, these are uh, U.S. Forest Service claims that uh, we are uh, in the process of just finalizing right now uh less than five thousand bucks a year for all of those claims um can you just go into more detail on production guidance any anything you can well i i, I i'm trying not to get too far ahead of myself here <laughs> just yet but you know we're looking at putting first door through the mill in uh you know uh, first couple of weeks of july uh, we would anticipate uh you know something like say a thousand tons of uh, ore through the mill in july we're looking at, uh, you know, uh, 3,000 uh, tons uh, through in August, and we're looking at being, you know, uh, in excess of 5,000 tons in uh, uh, in September. In September, and maybe it'll be late August, we should hit cash flow positive. Mm -hmm. uh, that, uh, you know, that's what we're looking at right now. Um, our old friend Shafter, um, how much is care and maintenance, and how much do you think you might get for it? If, if you're well, uh, Shafter's about four, yeah, Shafter's about four hundred thousand bucks a year to carry the thing right now. We just got a couple of guys down there on care and maintenance. But you know, I, you know, we've been doing a bit of work on Shafter. Uh, we we kind of discounted the Presidio where Arcana originally tried to go in and and uh, pick away, you know, at the the uh, remnant mining, and we wouldn't touch that uh, at all. We would only look to the gold fields side of this, which is a pristine. Um, 
uh, ore body, basically. There was a feasibility stunt uh, done by Goldfields in the 80s on this, uh, but we're finding additional information, and, and actually this, this thing is starting to look uh, uh, quite interesting to us. We, we found uh, some additional uh, drilling information that would lead us to believe that we think we've got a thicker ore body than what we had uh, anticipated. We've done a, a, a different uh, a polygonal resource on this uh, that suggests that uh, you know we'd be able to lower the cutoff grade. Uh, so uh, uh, we're plugging along. We're not, we're not doing a lot of work on the thing uh, because our focus is really on getting ourselves into production. But I, I think that the shaft is going to be uh, might be a pretty good mine. And you know, as we know it today from the PEA that was done, it's about a seven-year mine life. Uh, you know, with about a two and a half million dollar, yeah. or sorry, two and a half million ounce uh, silver production. If you want to put your presentation back up, I'm sure we'll refer to a map or something. Um, Kevin, uh, yeah. there was mention of a tunnel uh, from a former mine about 900 feet below the Virginia's tunnel. Is that tunnel? Yeah, tunnel only and, that, and that's that's right. Tailings, or could it transport ore from other uh, the other mine? Uh, I understand this is looking down the road a few years. Yeah, well, you know, the idea being is that this 10,000 foot tunnel, that, that's a lot of money put uh, to to drive that in. It comes in underneath us right here. So yeah, uh, you know, you could use that to, uh, to uh, um, you know, with a hoist and whatnot, you could either bring things in, you could bring certain people in, you get access uh, up into our mine. You could also mine lower than us uh, you know, down into the Telluride conglomerate, which uh, let me just throw this up here. Uh, just down below our, uh, you know, pink and, and this area that you see right here, uh, down here is where uh, Newmont mine, it's called a Telluride conglomerate. And uh, that's what Newmont mined for many, many years. Now it's high in uh, lead and zinc base metals. It's still considerably decent grade and whatnot here. So at the end of the day, um, you know, you may very well at some point in the future use that uh, tunnel to uh, to mine those areas, bring it out, and you'd have another mill uh, located in this area. Uh, and you could probably even other um, uh, older mines and, and, and projects in, in the vicinity, you, you could probably truck to. I mean, that's a little bit getting ahead of ourselves right now, but that's kind of our long-term thinking is that you know, uh, for a reasonable price, if we could pick this up, uh, you know, we think that that would be a prudent thing, uh, you know, a use of proceeds from a, a future business perspective. Okay. Um, what is the current amount left to spend on capital purposes? What is the contingency in dollars? We're just finalizing that as we speak right now, but we're, uh, we, we should be right around in contingency wise around 14, 15 million uh, remaining in contingency. We have about $38 million in the bank right now. Okay. And in your deposit, what drill hole spacing do you consider as enough to confirm continuity of the mineralization? We can't drill this ore body. That, that's why uh, it's, uh, I just, I'll throw up my presentation again. We're up in the top of, uh, of the mountains here. Um, and if you look, I got a, yeah, it's probably the best one. The reason that you see this green area right here, up here, the purple means that that's an indicated resource. The, the pink that's down here means it's a measured resource and, and the purple is the indicated. So we can put a mine plan on that as part of a feasibility study. But because we could not set up to get a drill hole in this area, this green, we had to leave that as inferred. So uh, from the perspective of drilling this ore body, what we can do is we go underground, we develop, we put a drill station up uh, and we, uh, uh, we can drill from underground, uh, but mainly what this is going to be is development on the vein, uh, and where necessary we poke a few holes. But uh, you know, and that's another reason why you know you're not going to have a 20-year reserve in front of you on this type of mining. It's narrow vein mining, uh, and uh, you, you've got to spend almost 75% of the mining cost just 
to uh, for an exploration uh, uh, purpose. So, uh, you know, what we hope to be able to do is to keep that nine or 10 years out in front of us, replace our reserves every single year for the next, you know, 50 years. All right. Um, before I pass it to Artie, just note everyone, please send in your questions uh, on your way out. Uh, feedback, please share your feedback and replay will be available in about an hour at amvestcapital.com slash webinars. Artie, do you have some questions? Thank you. Um, when we look at your mine design and geotechnical conditions, uh, what is the required uh, spacing with, between the production stops? Uh, do you think this will be a, a production bottleneck? No, not at all. Uh, the type of mining that we're doing is uh, RISU mining, it's split blasting. So we're able, geotechnically, we're able to have stopes that are 500 feet long by 300 feet high. For instance, if we were doing shrinkage sloping because of geotechnical constraints, we would probably have in excess of three times the development require, requirements and our stopes would be 200 by uh, 150 kind of size. So um, geotechnically, we have very small spaces that are open. We've got a, you know, uh, a 500 foot long opening, but it's eight feet high and four feet wide. So there's, there's no open stopes whatsoever. Thank you. And and what depth do you do you foresee? And you uh, with like um, how many meters you were able to trace the mineralization uh, when you look at the old openings and the uh, current uh, development workings? Yeah. Well, we're able to trace uh, uh, virtually all of these veins on surface uh, that we have. The Virginia's vein we can trace sixteen thousand feet. Uh, on surface. So it comes to surface, we can see it, we've sampled it. And as I said previously, under Colorado law, apex law is what rules. So if you own the apex of a vein, uh, wherever it goes, as long as you have claims on the apex, uh, you're good to go. Uh, so it's, uh, yeah, uh, we've got, and, and we've got eight other veins besides that, Wheel of Fortune, Coronado, Klondike, terrible, and so on and so forth. So I'm only talking about one vein at 16,000 feet of that vein. Thank you. Campbell? Sure. Um, another question or two, then we'll close. Can anything you can, any ballpark estimates of um, uh, 12 month revenue? <laughs> and um, do you think any, and thoughts on, on a debt? debt repayment during that time. Yeah, Anything well, you, know, you, you look at, we're going to bring some grade forward in the first year or two. And, uh, it, you know, based on uh, $25, $26 an ounce, we're going to be somewhere right around $50 million after tax free cash flow first couple of years. Uh, so that's a fair, that's a fair bit of, of money coming in. We have, uh, you know, various competing needs for those funds. We, we have a, uh, you know, a high cost, um, a debt facility here. I would make some sense, I think, for us to pay that down. However, you know, as we uh, get into production, we get cash flow going, we may be able to get a lot cheaper debt and take out one and replace it with another. We want to bring on the shafter mine, we believe, subject to a positive uh, uh, feasibility study that we hope to complete this year. So, and, and based on the, on the PEA that we have so far, it looks like that's about $22 million capex to do that. Uh, we have some exploration targets uh, that we would like to follow up on as well. Uh, we have, uh, you know, we have uh, excess cash. Uh, we could do a dividend, uh, those kinds of things. So as a, uh, as management and board, you know, we have to sit down. We don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. We'd like to get into production and see that money rolling in first. Uh, but, you know, we'll sit down uh, as, as a board and management and uh, decide what the best use uh, of uh, those competing needs are for the future. Okay, and you mentioned that you could expect to mine for decades. Could you yep. imagine to increase the size of the production in the future by increasing the mill capacity, et cetera? If you're able to produce 15 million ounces of silver instead of eight or nine million, that would be uh, that would for sure positively re be reflected in the share price. 
Yeah, I, I think our mill, that the existing mill that we've got, you know, there's things that we could do. You might top that thing out at seven, say 700 tons without having to go in and drill blast because it is underground and that's a constraint on that. Uh, this is narrow vein mining. So there, there's, there's a limit, uh, you know, to the e efficiency of how much ore you can extract. We think that we can extract certainly five, six, maybe even 700 tons from here. Uh, that coupled with uh, bringing Shafter online, uh, you know, you could certainly get into that 10 million uh, ounce range. But in all probability, to get much higher than that, uh, we would probably have to put another milling facility in place. Uh, and, and hence, uh, you know, the value possibly of acquiring the Camp Bird Mine and that mill site to being able to uh, uh, permit and put the, that in, in place kind of thing. Uh, you know, so it'd be pretty hard for me at this stage of the game to say we could produce 15 million ounces out of here. I'd like to think we probably could find ways of doing that. Uh, but, uh, you know, our, our focus right now is get ourselves into production and, and just get ourselves started up. Okay, good. I want to thank everyone for tuning in. And uh, maybe, Kevin, do you have a, a page with contact information on it? Uh, I believe we do. It's on the presentation. Yep. Uh, let me I'll pull that up. But thank everyone for tuning in on your way out. Please share your feedback, a few lines, positive or negative, or in between. Really appreciate it. And I'll get to Kevin and the team almost immediately. And uh, you about an hour. The replay will be available at amvestcapital.com slash webinars. Easy to remember. And uh, you also get an email. And uh, if you like it, share it, tweet it, uh, LinkedIn it, whatever. Um, and uh, let's just see how, there we go. Kay Drover at arcana.com and Gary at strata-star.com. And I'm C. McCrary at amvestcapital.com. So with that, thank you everyone. Good luck, Kevin. And, thank you. Thanks everyone. And uh, we'll see you soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye.